I know it's not saying much, but it's better than Rebel Moon 1 and 2. The movie is fine. Welcome to Just My Thoughts. I'm yours, Khalil Ward. On this episode, I'll be talking about Atlas. It's a new Netflix movie starring J-Lo, Simu Liu, Mark Strong, and Sterling K. Brown. Stop me if you heard this before. When you're creating AI, the first rule is do not harm humans. So, of course, in this movie, the AI bypassed that security protocol and they kill one million civilians. Most of the AI in this movie, they always say like house bots, like they're just supposed to be in your house doing stuff. It, is, it doesn't seem like they had them doing a whole bunch of other things. The most wanted AI terrorist is named Harlan. He's played by Simu and he basically overrode his protocols and then overrode everybody else's protocols and made them do what he wanted to do. So fast forward 28 years later, everything is very futuristic. We meet Atlas Shepard, played by J-Lo. She's an analyst. I don't know the company, doesn't matter. She's brought on because they capture a lieutenant of Harlan's and she's there to interrogate him to find out what Harlan is. 28 years, they have not been able to figure out where he went, what he's doing, if he's going to attack. So she's pretty smart, clever. She finds out where Harlan is. He's off world on some other planet and they have a mission. The mission is led by Elias Banks, played by Sterling K. Brown. He has his team. His team uses arcs and they essentially these big robots you can go into. Yes, people compared it to Titanfall, the Xbox game, and they are connected with a, a neural link. J-Lo is like, my mom's been working on that. Don't use that. That's stupid. And he's like, no, these are different. So basically, there's a two-way communication with the arcs. So think of Pacific Rim. You know how when in Pacific Rim, the two characters, they have to drift together and they, they can see each other's memories and stuff. Now imagine if the big robot could talk after you drift. That's what the arc does. So they have names like uh, Brown's arc is named like Zoe. So when he's thinking things and hearing things and seeing things, she's picking up on it and learning and adapting to him as he's learning and adapting to her. Make sense? Cool. So they go on the mission and we all know what happens when they go on this mission. It just gets destroyed. Everything goes wrong on this mission. And when that happens, Atlas is put into a arc that saves her when they go crashing down onto this foreign planet. The arc's name is Smith and Smith is there to protect her. But she's like hesitant. Turns out her mom is the one who created the neural links and stuff. She worked very closely with robots. She worked closely with Harlan. Harlan was a housebot in Atlas's home. So she doesn't really trust robots. She wants to just save the people. And he's like, no, but we need to link up to, to be better. And she's like, nah, I don't know about that. And they go back and forth and he's trying to understand her. And they have a banter that occasionally is funny where he throws out sarcasm at wrong times and he tries to use humor to defuse situations. Did I chuckle a few times? Yeah. And of course, their relationship grows during this movie as expected because they spend a lot of time together. We spent a lot of time with them on this foreign planet because everything went wrong and Harlan is trying to do something. Like, there's a lot of issues with the movie. Is it a great movie? No. Is it good? Debatable with... It's passable. Like I said, it's passable. Is it something you should watch? Sure, why not? It's two hours. Two hours flat. Just two hours. But it's not the worst Netflix movie out there. It's not the worst Netflix movie I watched this year. So we spent a lot of time with Atlas and Smith as they learn and understand each other. Harlan doesn't really do much in the movie. That's a big, big negative. Like Simu doesn't do anything. He's barely in the movie. It reminds me of Simulant a little bit, which is a Hulu movie. He's also a, a robot in that movie. But in that movie, he's trying to get robots off of their protocol so they can actually live life and fall in love, which seems kind of cool, actually. But they don't want that to happen, and they try to stop him. In this movie, 
they don't really say he has a plan. He's just gone for 28 years and then they meet him on this planet and then we find out his plan. But spending most of the time with Atlas and Smith, it's okay because their relationship grows and every little bit they start linking together to understand each other better. That's essentially the movie. Is it? It's not as bad as people, when it first came out, people were like, yo, this is the worst movie. It's okay, all right, it's okay. But those are just my thoughts on Atlas. It's a okay, fine Netflix movie. It's not gonna change your mind or anything. We've seen AI be done like this before. The last action sequence was okay, because we got to actually see Simu do stuff. But like, if you don't like J-Lo, you ain't gonna enjoy this movie because we spent a lot of time with her. There's not a lot of Mark Strong in here. Uh, Sterling is here and there, but it's mostly J-Lo and a talking robot. You have it. Um, but if you watched the movie, let me know what you thought about it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.